All right, I'm back. We got ourselves a Cerveza, another one from Mexico. This one has a pretty cool label, uh, if I don't say so myself. It has like this deer with a crown on it. His antlers have some foliage and flowers in it. Really cool looking label. And as you can see there, it's a stout, 7.4%. And this one is uh, from Cypress, Cerveza de la Ciudad. So I think that's beer at the city, if um, if my guess is correct. It even has the brewer uh, of this specific beer on the front, which I think that's pretty cool. Give the brewer a little bit of props for his work. I like that. Uh, on the back, I it looks like it's pretty detailed if only I spoke Spanish. It looks like they have uh, pairing recommendations. So it looks like maybe uh, meat as in like beef chicken and then what looks like a cupcake maybe it means like good with dessert as well and then it looks like it has like a hoppiness scale which is what i'm guessing that is and it's like four out of ten i like that that little extra info i don't don't know spanish but you know it is what it is and it looks like they're showing they won a couple awards possibly a first place and second place pretty cool shit all right so let's give this a uh, crack here. That was a that was a very crispy crack. <clears throat> I got a glass over here, so we'll get a look at this baby. Looks nice and deeply dark. Lot, a lot of carbonation. A lot of carbonation. Go ahead and uh, top that off. Let it cool down. Not getting much off that. Not getting too much off that. Got some on my nose there. It's just a kind of roasty, typical stout stuff. Roasty, maybe a little bit of a bitter dark chocolate. Definitely has a little bit more carbonation than I would like. Um, but after washing it down, it has a nice bit of sweetness. Um, it's kind of like a good dark chocolate. Um, and that washed over really well. Like, it has a little bit of roast. Maybe like a, a medium to low roastiness. Like coffee, black coffee type of roastiness. And then like a nice wave of dark chocolate. And that is a good beer. I wish it just toned back the uh, carbonation just a little bit. All right. We're going to be using Pinnacle Grooming, as you can see right there. Just kidding. It's not at all on the label. I wish it was. But beautiful label. This one is called Sicilian. And they do have the info on the back. So it's better than nothing. And it's pretty detailed at that. Four ounces. They got the ingredients. It's a tallow base. I just kind of wish there was some info on the front. And then same on the side label. There's absolutely no info on the side label, but it is equally um, beautiful. So very nice labeling. I just wish they had the uh, information on the on the top somewhere there's a, there's a way to do it you know what I mean anyhow never used pinnacle grooming before so we're gonna give them a shot today and the scent on this one is beauteous <laughs> and that is a stallion term beauteous it's a it's a beautiful scent uh, Sicilian when I think of uh, Sicily, I'm thinking of citrus, citruses like bergamot, Sicilian bergamot, stuff like that. I've seen that in scent notes. Um, this one here has bergamot, lemon, lavendern, 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 which must be different than lavender. Maybe it's like a synthetic or something. If you know, let me know. Maybe I'll have to look that one up on my own. Uh, jasmine, Sombak, honey, tonka, vanilla, and tobacco. We got this 
lathered up right here. We're using the 3D printed bowl again that was gifted to me by Marion the Barbarian, designed by Roger Quintero and printed by Tony DeLitt. And then this right here is an artisan we haven't seen in a while, but this is the Crazy Badger. And this is a beautiful crimson and black brush. It's got some nice sparkles going on throughout. Nice shape as well. And then this is a no-nonsense badger knot on top of that. Doesn't have a fancy nickname. It wasn't hyped up to drive the price up. It was just a no-nonsense badger knot. It was probably sold under the name Two Band Finest or, or some jazz like that. It was one of the uh, first brushes that I owned. I do believe this was either my first or second artisan brush. It was either this or Wolf Whiskers. I dove right in really early. Went for the Wolf Whiskers brush fairly early on. But I've always liked this knot. Um, it's always had great flow through. It's not the densest, which probably aids a little bit in that flow through department. But has really soft tips, good flow through, displays nicely. Just nothing really to complain about. The brush has a nice balance, it's not too heavy, doesn't feel too light, it's just it's a good brush all around. Alright, so we got it all lathered up here. It looks well hydrated, but it's not super dense. So, before we get to shaving, this is the Gem Featherweight Razor. Let's see, I think they have the G on this side, yep. Gem Featherweight. This is a handsome little razor. <clears throat> and I have a, uh, was it a Persona stainless blade in this? Always nice to bust out the old vintage gems from time to time. And I figured since I'm using a new soap, it was as good a time as any to use the old Featherweight. Featherweight is a really smooth shaver. Takes these gem style blades and uh, gives a nice smooth platform for me to shave on. It has blade feel, as with all gem style razors. I think that just comes with the territory. But it is a... Uh, it's not an aggressive razor. It just has a nice medium efficiency. And it gives a very smooth shaving experience. <clears throat> so far, so good. The soap is quite slick. No problems for me in the slickness department on my first go with this soap. I think I got it fairly well hydrated, so I didn't expect any slickness problems. But the density looks like it could definitely use a little help. It looks as if I washed out the soap, but I, uh, I honestly don't feel like I did. <clears throat> For me, <clears throat> that density adds to that luxurious face feel. And it's not necessary um, whatsoever in the performance of the shave. But 
And as far as the uh, overall experience of the shave, that density gives you a luxurious feel, which means something to me. Sorry if the, uh, the sound of the TV is making its way in here. Once again, the wife shows no regard or respect for me making my shaving videos. Nothing new there. She just cracked a beer, so I think she's kind of getting in the zone. <laughs> and her TV show is uh, blasting. <clears throat> Anyhow. The, uh, the scent on this one, though. I've been avoiding that. Um, or should I say building up to that? Because the scent on this one is fucking beautiful. If they released an EDP of this, I would go ham on it. The scent on Sicilian is two thumbs up for me. <clears throat> I feel like they take a nice, warm, sweet, mid and base, and then throw some beautiful, well done citrus notes on top, but not overdone. And they made a fantastic scent. Banger for spring and summer, but this one has like all year appeal. <clears throat> No doubt. I wish they had an aftershave splash. And I could only dream that they would make an ADP for this. Off the tub, it wasn't this impressive. It just smelled good. But once lathered, I really like this. Once lathered, I was like, dang. <laughs> this is that shit right there. It's always a... Always a pleasure to get to rock one of these vintage gems. Keep them... Alive and well. Keep them... Fresh in the minds of wet shavers, never letting the legacy of vintage gems die. I always make it a point to uh, support my fellow shavers that bust out the vintage gems. Because this is one of those ones where it has a little bit less popularity and you kind of don't get any recognition for using them. You get less views, you know, on YouTube, you get less likes on social media. It's just kind of one of those platforms where it's like, it's not as popular as double-edged straight razors, and really nothing is in this wet shaving hobby. Really, the only thing that's going to give you like significant growth is using popular items such as double-edged safety razors instead of anything else <laughs> but since I'm not really focused on that kind of shit channel growth doesn't mean anything to me I appreciate everybody's support but that's not why I do this <clears throat> I've always done this for the love of the hobby and I'm not trying to be corny <clears throat> because I would have, uh, I would have chased what everybody likes the most if that's, if that's what I really 
cared about was growing the channel, I would have done what everybody wanted me to do. <clears throat> I don't care about growing the channel. I still have the beard. <laughs> After hundreds, thousands <laughs> of comments to get rid of the beard, I still have it. Because that's I'm not doing this channel <laughs> to uh, fulfill your guys' idea of a shaving channel. I'm doing this to document my wet shaving experience and hopefully help you guys along the way, but I'm not going to bend or, you know, turn into something I'm not. <clears throat> you got the Lancaster towel. And that was a really nice shave. I gotta say, I wasn't blown away by the soap. It had enough slickness to do the job. I had no issues with the slickness. You don't need much to be a decent quality soap. That will, that will get the job done. But it also wasn't noteworthy by any stretch of the imagination. And it didn't have that density that gives soaps a luxurious feel. Which is also not a necessity. But it was noticeable that it wasn't there. Overall, this seemed to me like an average soap with an above average scent because the scent on this one was phenomenal. I really enjoyed the scent on this. I wish they had an aftershave splash available in the States. I really wish they had an EDP or EDT available in the States. That would be, that'd be a dream come true. But overall, a not bad experience. A decent soap. So, we are going to finish off with Strike Gold Shave's Honest Abe. And this was a 4th of July release last year. And this one was an absolute banger for me. Honest Abe was a fucking banger for me. And it's kind of in the same vein as this Sicilian. Kind of. Honest Abe is based off Mugler's. Um, Ultra Zest, which is a high-end cologne. I'm also going to put a few drops of this Good Oleo. I used it the other day um, with the PAA and forgot how much I love this Good Oleo. So I put a couple drops of Good Oleo in the hand and then I'm going to put a nice helping of Honest Abe. We're just going to mix those two together, add a little bit extra skin food into this aftershave splash, which I appreciate. The splash is fine on its own, but I think it's one of those splashes that benefits from a little bit of help. And that doesn't turn me away from buying Strike Gold Shaves aftershaves whatsoever simply for the fact that I have aftershaves from many artisans that I feel like I can use just a little bit of help from some good oleo and if I'm gonna buy this product that is versatile that could go from a standalone skincare product to a aftershave booster to a um, in a pinch beard oil, it, you know, the good oleo has a lot of uses, so it, it doesn't stop me from buying these aftershaves that might benefit from a little bit of help. Anyhow, that was a nice shave. I did enjoy it. Um, I'm <laughs> struggling to figure out which glass I'm going to pick up if you see me looking left, right, left, right. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Uh, I had a good shave. I appreciate all the support 
I'll catch you guys on the next one and cheers.